Welcome, listeners, to The Bug's Labyrinth, where I will guide you through the maze of secrets that make up our world. I am your host. You can call me The Bug if you must call me anything. A list of all applicable trigger warnings have been provided in the episode notes of every episode. If any topics are of any concern to you, please take care of yourself and skip this episode. We'll be right here for you next time. So, welcome to The Labyrinth. I will be your guide. People have been asking me who I'm trying to reach, the audience I'm trying to find. I believe I found it, but I'll try to explain while keeping my anonymity while trying to keep the eyes off of me. There's a group of supporters, watchers, they're called. They are under some amount of control. This show is meant to try and break that control, to show you the truth of the one you follow, before it's too late. I apologize again for how cryptic I have to be, but coming out and saying its name gives it power. I can't afford to do that at this point. Giants in the Deep Entity Classification ID PCUH-23 Status of Entity Unknown. Classification of Entity. Creature. First Instance of Entity. July 8th, 2023. Date of Event. July 8th, 2023. Date of Report. July 9th, 2023. Name of Victim. Marcus Jensen. Assumed Awe. The Deep. It was our honeymoon. It was supposed to be the best time of our lives. The wedding was incredible. My wife Miranda looked like an angel walking down the aisle. The sun was so bright and there wasn't a single cloud in the sky. I truly could not have imagined a better day to mark the rest of our lives together. I can't look at the pictures now. We had planned a three-week trip to Bali for our honeymoon, and the first week or so was perfect. I had never seen Miranda so happy. We worked hard for the lives we had. Miranda was an ICU nurse, so you can understand the monumental strain she had been under for the past three years. And I work construction. Twelve-hour days of back-breaking labor under managers who do nothing but kick up their feet in the break room and contractors who have no idea what they're talking about. We would both come home from impossibly long days with tired bodies and exhausted minds, and the money wasn't great, but it was enough to live for the most part. I had saved up for years, practically from the moment we met to be able to afford the wedding and honeymoon. She had always talked about her impossible dream wedding, and I was willing to do whatever it took to make that happen for her. I surprised her with the trip to Bali, and she collapsed when I told her it was three weeks long. Yeah, we may do. We did the usual things couples do in Bali. Long beach days, amazing food and drinks, dancing well into the night. She had always been adventurous, so she took me along on everything there was to do. Zip lining, parasailing, wakeboarding. If it was an option, she put our names on the list. We laughed a lot those days. Well, one day we had scuba diving lessons. I'm not scared of the ocean. I want to make that very clear. 
I would just say I have a healthy fear. There are a lot of things in the ocean much larger, stronger, and freakier than me, so I would rather just stay out of the deeper parts of it. Miranda convinced me by saying we wouldn't be going deeper than 30 feet since we were just beginners. She had done a ton of research to reassure me it would be okay, so I agreed. I just couldn't stand the idea of disappointing her on the honeymoon we had worked so hard for. So... We squeezed into those awful wetsuits and started the first lesson, going over the air tanks and weights and other tools you need to make sure everything goes smoothly. They told us we would be in a group and there would be plenty of professional divers going out with us since we were going with a larger diving group. That made me feel better. I thought as long as there were professionals around, I would be safe. We would be safe. So, we all piled onto the boat that would take us to the diving point. Like I said, it was a larger group, me, my wife, and about ten other happy and excited faces. All of us were new to something like this. My wife squeezed my hand during the boat ride out, and that's when I became aware of how nervous I actually was. She could always tell when there was something up with me, even if I didn't know it myself. I thought I was good at hiding my anxiety, but from the moment she met me, she could always tell. Just one of the many reasons I loved her. When it came time for the dive, the instructors explained how it all worked very thoroughly. Since once you're underwater, they wouldn't be able to explain it to us. So they went over how you sink, how you swim, and how you rise again. I went over it over and over again in my mind, feeling the weight of the air tank on my back, the mouthpiece in my hands, the goggles on my face, and the handles I was meant to turn. Then... One by one, they flipped backwards into the water. An instructor was waiting us by the edge of the boat to make sure we made it in safely. It was a bright and sunny day. The ocean was clear and blue, so much so that you could see each diver as they began to sink and swim away deeper into the crystal water. My wife went before me, I think to reassure me that it was okay. She gave me such a bright and excited smile before falling in. I watched her hit the water and then closed my eyes to steady myself. I wish I had watched longer, seen her swim away. But instead, I took a deep breath, felt the edge of the boat under me, and fell backwards over the side. As soon as my back hit the water, I knew something was wrong. The water that engulfed me was cold, much colder than the water I had felt the entire trip before then. Then, I noticed all my equipment was gone. The goggles were off my head, the air tank was no longer strapped to my back, and the mouthpiece wasn't in my hand. Somehow, I had... Stripped down to nothing, naked in the vast expanse of water that surrounded me. I tried to swim away, to move, to do anything, but it was like I was being held there. No amount of movement would stop me from being pulled in, like I was being sucked into some kind of drain. I could feel the water around me growing colder as I was pulled deeper and deeper in. Panic filled my chest, and I wanted to scream, but I held my breath. I couldn't let any of the air I still had in my lungs escape. I forced myself to open my eyes, despite not having any goggles, and it stung for a while before the pain settled. I might as well have kept them closed. The water was so dark and murky, a brownish green that surrounded me on all sides, and it only got darker below my feet. I couldn't see more than a few feet in front of me. That's when I knew there would be no escape. There was no way I would be able to break the surface before running out of air. No way to escape my watery grave. I had heard before that drowning could be peaceful. The worst part is the panic, and the first feeling of the water filling your lungs. Then. Your body's filled with warmth. 
and you're simply lulled off to sleep. I don't know how, but I didn't wonder how I'd gotten there, or where there even was. I was so quick to accept my death. So I watched. I watched the shapes of the fish swimming by, the bits of plant floating around me. I imagined what would feed on me once my body hit the ocean floor. For all the panic I was feeling, it was peaceful there, in the deep. Then, that's when I heard a rumbling coming from below me. I was worried my eardrums had popped from the air pressure, but I didn't think I could be deep enough for that, despite how dark it was. All the fish I could see scattered at the sound, swimming away as fast as they could to escape. I assumed what I thought was the worst, that somehow I had made my way to shark-infested waters and I was seconds away from being fish food, but how could I imagine what was coming my way? I, I don't know how to explain it, but the soles of my feet began to tingle as the rumbling vibrated the space beneath my bare feet. I watched in complete, abject terror for whatever was making its way towards me much faster than I could hope to get away. I I imagined an anglerfish, or a a squid, or maybe even a whale, but... No. I wouldn't be so lucky. It wasn't a fish, or a whale, or a a scrap of sunken ship or anything else you could possibly imagine finding in the ocean. No. I watched as a gargantuan human face rose from the blackened abyss of water below me. A human face the size of a damn skyscraper barreling towards me like a freight train eyes were wide and unblinking, each easily as wide as I was tall, glazed over and unfocused like it couldn't see me. Like I was so small compared to its sheer size that I was nothing more than a speck, a piece of sand, an ant on the side of the highway. I tried to scream, but you can't scream underwater. Instead, I released all the air I was holding onto and sucked in lungfuls of murky salt water. The face opened its impossibly large mouth to swallow me, and I stared down at my death in the shape of perfectly straight white teeth and a mouth the size of a cargo ship. I'm not a religious man. But in those seconds before being swallowed, I prayed to be swept into that peaceful death of drowning. I prayed to whatever god that was listening, I would be knocked out before entering the maw of whatever this thing was that was trying to swallow me. The gods must have been listening because I did drown. I felt the warmth the slipping away of my consciousness as my life left me. I woke up on the shoreline, surrounded by a crowd of worried beachgoers and a group of paramedics pressing into my chest. I threw up buckets of seawater before I recognized I was still alive. The paramedics said my heart had stopped. There was no oxygen going to my brain, And for who knows how long before I was pulled out of the water, I was dead. I don't know how I escaped that thing. I imagine it had something to do with my death. But I can't get that face out of my head. Can't stop thinking about how big its body must have been. The vacant look in its hulking eyes. They told me Miranda had gone missing like I had. It seemed to everyone who witnessed the event that we both hit the water and disappeared. But somehow I escaped and she... And that's the worst part of all of this. 
I could handle my death, but living the rest of my life without my Miranda... I'll never step foot on a beach, let alone go into the ocean again. If you're smart, you'll steer clear of it too. Who knows what else is lurking down there, ready to swallow you whole. This is the first instance of entity PCUH-23, seemingly a new entity or one that has been hiding itself from humans. After many attempts to locate the area this event took place or make contact with entity PCUH-23, none have been successful. We await further diving trials or victims of the entity. Thank you for listening to The Bugs Labyrinth. The Bugs Labyrinth is an Amsel TV production. This episode was written, recorded, directed, and edited by Amsel T. Vance. Manuscripts were edited by Avery K. Rayner. Audio consultant, Danny B. Places and names have been changed for the privacy of all involved. Safety is the most important thing to us, and we will never compromise that. Follow us on Twitter, at Bugs Labyrinth, for updates and if you need to contact us. Rate and review us wherever you listen to podcasts. It's the best way to help us out and get our story out there. And support our Patreon to help us keep making cool stuff. Until next time, stay safe, listeners. <laughs> <laughs>